warning. All displays of negativity will be deliciously repackaged. And properly returned to sender. Only good vibes allowed beyond this point. Now if you're ready, come on in. Champagne gang, biz fam, confidant. <laughs> Welcome to the chalet located in Champagne City, baby, for another episode of Sip, Savor, and Spill. You're joining me, the Empress, for grown discussions and bubbly banter. Over here, we give glassy with a twist, huh? A little clink with chaos with a side of charm. So if you're ready to sip, savor, and spill, then come on in. On your way in, grab you a glass of bubbly, kick your feet up on one of those chase lounges, and let's get ready to get into it. Now go ahead and raise those glasses high for our boost of empowerment and encouragement. Today, let's talk about the incredible power of perspective. When you change how you view things, how you view things will change. It's all about shifting your mindset to see the opportunities, lessons, and the beauty in every situation. By looking at challenges as chances to grow and setbacks as setups for comebacks, we can transform our lives in the most amazing ways. Your mind is a powerful tool. Use it to create positivity, hope, and resilience. So let's raise a glass to new perspectives, fresh starts, and seeing the world through a lens of endless possibilities. Cheers to transforming our lives from the inside out. And cheers to you, Confidant, for you are worth it. Let's toast. So y'all listen, I don't know what's going on in our country right now, but I don't trust nothing, nobody. Nothing being said, nothing being presented. To me, it's all a false flag situation. And for those of you who don't know what a false flag situation is, it's where they want you to focus on one thing. All the while, there's something totally different going on on the other side. It's like our world is getting crazier and crazier by the day. Hell, not even the world. Let's just narrow it down to the United States of these Americas. Food just about the same price as a house. The cost of living so high, we all probably should figure out how to purchase a mansion together and live together to save up our money to survive can't trust the food we don't even know if the food is real we don't know what we putting in our bodies can't trust the medicine i feel like the medicine is setting us up for failure what and who can we trust anymore because this is how i feel right now everybody's a suspect Uh uh-huh everybody's a suspect I don't believe the news. I don't believe the president. I don't believe the wannabe president. I don't believe neither one of their teams because the water is smelling a lot like pork and I ain't drinking it. I ain't drinking it. They can't keep pissing on us and calling it rain and expecting us not to see that it's yellow. Well, hell, these days they controlling the rain and the storms and clouds. So see what I mean? Everybody's a suspect. You can't believe nothing no more. We don't know if the rain is coming from God or a scientist in China. We don't know what's going on anymore. But we just supposed to sit back and suck it up and believe everything that they laying out before us. So check it out. Today we're going to be talking about two things that recently just happened. This so-called Trump assassination attempt and this whole thing with Microsoft. We're going to discuss those two things on today. Because the sauce is smelling a little sour and I can't take it. I can't take it. So let's go through these clips and let me know in the comments if you have any questions about what's going on in our world today. What happened? Ready? 
a look at what happened. So I have a few concerns with this, right? My first concern is when it looks like Trump is talking, a few times he glances over in the direction of where the shooter was. Do you think he potentially saw the shooter out his peripheral? Because this is an open field, so what is he looking at in that direction? The snipers are behind him, not on the side. So what is he looking at in that direction? And also, considering they said someone was shot in the head, why does there seem to be no concern from the crowd about somebody who's on the ground, supposedly behind Trump? People have phones out. They're looking in Trump's direction. If someone is down behind Trump, wouldn't you think all of the attention of the crowd would divert to the person who was injured and unalive behind him? What is going on? Even when you look at the crowd in front of the podium, there seems to be no concern. And there was a person who was unalive and two that were critically injured. Where is the concern from the crowd for people who were just injured? I know y'all remember when the shooting took place in Vegas at the country music concert. Everybody was running to assist and help people who had been shot. But nothing here. People aren't running. People aren't panicked. People aren't rushing to assist someone who's been hurt. You heard a few screams in the beginning, but that was it. What are we saying here? I need somebody to drop in the comments and let me know. Because 2 plus 2 is not equal in 4 in this situation. There's no shock from the crowd to the fact that somebody was injured, someone was unalive. Nothing. Just USA. USA. All focus is on Trump. Where were the individuals located that were hit by the bullets? You don't see medics running in. You heard a brief scream, but then that was over with. What are, what are we doing? Piss. Rain. Understand what I'm saying? The shots being fired. President Trump goes down. He takes cover. And it's also very likely when you look at that banner, there's like this banner around that stage. That tends to be some type of steel that's there by design for an incident like this so that the protectee can hit the ground and take cover. We see the agents come in now from the sides and their job is that's the shift. That's what's called the shift. They come in and they are the they are the the armor. They're the ones who are re literally literally going to come around. They're going to secure his body. The goal is now if any additional shots are fired, they take the impact of those shots. They bring him back down. Now you can hear them too. If you're listening to the audio, you can hear them talking on comms. Is it clear? Are we good to go? Because they want to take him from where he's at and they want to move him to the vehicles. You, Anytime you're open, and if you look at previous assassinations or assassination attempts, Reagan, JFK, just the most recent ones, always outside, right? Always line aside issues. So they've got him secure. Once they hear the go, you can go. So I'm assuming for them to get the go, somebody probably told them the threat has been neutralized, right? You're not going to move unless you kind of know what's going on. They pick him up and you can hear the president. It's interesting, just from a human behavior perspective, you hear the president saying, where are my shoes? Where are my shoes? A lot of people are commenting on, is that an odd thing to say? You also have to think about the stress and impact of what just happened. Yeah, shocked, yeah. And he's just, you know, it's a kind of like a very human, simple thing to think of. As an agent, I mean, the president now with this iconic act of defiance, holding up his fist and literally sticking his neck out into the open again. But if you're an agent right then and there, are you just wishing you could just whisk him off to the car? Well, I saw that and I saw that I can understand why he's doing it from that perspective. But from the other perspective, I'm thinking, we know one shooter is down. Right. You don't know if there are other right. shooters. And then the other thing is when you move him to the vehicles, you want to make sure, does he have any other shots within him and check? Whoever she is, maybe she needs to be on the protective detail for the president, former president. Because what was going on with the Secret Service in this situation? I heard a second shot go off before they even moved to him. He dropped down on his own and then they rushed to him. Like, what is going on? And again, I say, if you look at the crowd behind him, this man with the hat on to the left looked confused as hell. Everybody sitting behind him, quiet. If someone has been unalived behind Trump, where Trump was standing, everybody kind of calm. There's no blood splatter on anyone's shirt. So where did this take place at? Even in the crowd, somebody's standing up. People got cameras out, recording. Everyone's focused on where Trump was on the stage. 
Again, I say, where was the victims? Are you telling me they weren't noticed right away? And I absolutely agree with her. Why would you stand him up like that and allow him to stick his head out, not knowing if there was another shooter or not? It doesn't make sense. You got one shooter. How did you know there wasn't another one somewhere nearby? This whole thing is screaming some kind of inside job. Set up, orchestrated, something. But there's more to this than what they're telling us. Lots of breaking news I'm about to cover. As you see, there is a hole here in his chest. Also, this woman was reporting from Times Square showing that the televisions was not reporting what happened to him. And I even went down to Atlanta to the CNN Center and they cut off all the televisions as well as when I went to the bars. They would not show it regardless even when I asked them to put the news on. They said they're not allowed to. Why is there not a single article that is sitting there saying what happened today? Literally some journalist sitting there saying firecracker. Also, this guy was out in the field and he was trying to get the police and the Secret Service attention and they weren't really paying attention to him saying that, hey, someone is up on the roof. Now, I do want to let you know that he did get up and he let the crowd know that he was okay. He was saying that he needed his shoes, but obviously, like you saw, there was the hole in his chest. As you see here, but obviously you better know that they're wearing a <clears throat> tight vest. So this is where he was holding the rally. This is where Secret Service was, and this is where the active person was. Also, this was really, really weird to me when I was down in Atlanta. They would not play this stuff on the television. I don't get it. It's very confusing. Tell me what your thoughts are. Take care. God bless. Lucy, you got some explaining to do. Can somebody please help me understand? Why was there nothing covered about him taking a bullet to the chest if this was the case? Not one news coverage, not one article. All we heard about was the ear. So you're telling me one of the bullets hit him in the chest and nobody said anything? Bulletproof vest or not, nobody said anything about one of those bullets actually hitting him in the chest? And you wonder why my thumbnail says we need Olivia Pope. Because <laughs> what the hell is going on? And this is what I want you to pay attention to. Just take a look at this next clip. Because with all this open space, right? How did they not see anybody walking up with a whole gun to climb a building, lay on the roof, and get off some shots? How did they not see this? Not to mention all of the people that's talking about people didn't run because the rallies are a pretty closed area. This was an open field. This wasn't an enclosed space. It doesn't make sense. And until somebody comes out with a logical explanation for this, it's still not gonna make sense to me. That this 20 year old just woke up one day and said, oh, I'm gonna ruin my life by trying to take out Trump. And I know people are a little touched these days. But to just casually walk through a crowd, walk through Secret Service, walk up to a building, climb up the building, lay down in the open where anyone can see you and take a shot, that makes sense to you. Ciao. Was Donald Trump even shot at all? We don't know. We know he was shot at. But was he hit by a bullet? Who knows? There's literally no official story here, guys. The only word we have is Donald Trump himself saying that the bullet hit his ear and went through. No doctor has said this. There's been no press conference of medical staff. There's been no written document from his doctors. Nothing. Donald Trump is 78 years old, guys. He's a former president. He's the lead candidate. I mean, he is the Republican nominee now, officially. Why did we not even get a medical report on what happened to him? Guys, he's 78 years old. If Trump is telling the truth and a bullet actually went through his ear, wouldn't we want, like, you know, a medical report on that? Did the bullet hit his head as well? I mean, like, what kind of damage did it cause? Does it cause hearing damage? I mean, like, wouldn't we want... He's 78 years old! If a 78-year-old was shot, you'd at least have a doctor's report or something. Guys, this is weird stuff, okay? I don't know that it matters if a bullet hit his ear or not, because, by the way, it could have been the teleprompter that got hit. We also now found out that some Secret Service agents were injured as well by just that, flying debris. It could have been uh, metal debris. It could have been plastic. They said they're not sure, but debris from the bullets hitting something else. Could have been Trump as well. Um, don't we at least deserve to get a doctor's report? A press conference on his status? This is this is the problem where it becomes almost authoritarian. It is this lack of transparency, the shutting down of info. And final point here, keep in mind, Trump lied about having COVID. He didn't tell anybody. He tested positive, told nobody. He had the debate with Biden, put Biden's life at risk because this was the 2020, remember the year when everybody was dying of COVID. He then almost died of COVID and had to get rushed to the hospital. Didn't tell us. 
didn't tell us that's what was going on. We didn't find out that he almost died until like, I think somebody wrote a book and finally mentioned it later that that happened. So it's not like he doesn't lie about this stuff. If he, li if he lied about almost dying, then wouldn't he lie about a bullet, right? Um, I just think we have a right to know, and, and it's weird because Josh Marshall has pointed this out, a journalist, that the media just doesn't care. They care. They're afraid to challenge Trump. They're afraid to ask because maybe the Trump campaign will get mad. Guys, this is our freaking democracy. It's your job to ask. Just, just like, can you get some facts at all about what happened to the guy? Would it kill you? Listen, I can almost agree with him here because the media are vultures. The media ain't running away from a story. A story like the former sitting president being shot. And just no coverage, no update. Just go on with the world as usual. <laughs> what world are we living in? Did somebody switch the sign on again and we switch dimensions? Because it seems like we're ending up with more questions than we have answers. 78 year old, injured, former sitting president. And you're not going to let the public know exactly what happened. How he was injured, just back on the campaign trail like somebody handed him an ice cream cone. Ask me no questions, I'll tell you no lies. Y'all, this is getting crazy. So crazy to the point it's almost getting scary at the lengths that people will go to these days. Like, who are we? What have we become? <laughs> Maybe that's the question. Are we really this hungry for power and authority that we would go this far to obtain it? Let me know what you think about it. The man who was killed in an assassination attempt on Donald Trump threw himself in front of his family to protect them. 50-year-old retired fire chief Corey Comperator was sitting behind Trump at the rally in Pennsylvania when Matthew Thomas Crooks opened fire. A bullet pierced the upper part of Trump's ear and two other people were critically wounded. But sadly, Corey died whilst trying to shield his wife and daughter from the gunfire. His daughter, Allison, said he died a real-life superhero. Rest in peace to this man who lost his life, but somebody please help me understand where this took place at. They keep saying it happened behind Trump, but wouldn't there be a reaction, I keep saying, from the individuals behind Trump at the fact that there is a whole deceased individual sitting behind him? Y'all, it don't make sense. Are we sure this took place at the rally? And they're not just trying to convince us this took place at the rally? Because there's no blood splatter. There's no medics rushing in. There's nothing. There's no commotion. There's no hysteria from his family. He was shielding his family. Wouldn't you still be hearing screams from his family if this took place right after an attempt was made on Trump at the rally that we watched? I didn't see anybody's focus diverting to anyone on the ground, anyone injured. I didn't see any blood on anyone's shirt, just Trump's ear. So somebody please help me understand when and where this man lost his life. Because this doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't make sense. And when it doesn't make sense, you got to start asking more questions until it starts making sense. You've seen the mass hysteria that's caused by gunfire. And you mean to tell me that not only were shots fired at Trump, but several people took bullets and there's no concern from anybody? Just because if that's the case, then I have a whole different set of questions for the Republican Party. Because that would lead me to believe that there is no concern for the loss of life, even when the loss of life is one of your own. If this actually took place at the rally, my inner conspiracy is telling me that this happened somewhere else and they're trying to say it took place at the rally. Because from the footage that I've seen, how, how, when, and where? Take a look what happened. Take a look what happened. As I stated in the beginning, he turns his head and looks in the direction of the shooter. Now, I don't know if he saw the shooter or not, but it's not like the buildings were that high. Do y'all think that he saw the shooter when he turned his head? Do you think he was looking in the direction of the shooter when he turned his head? What do you think? This is how the assassination attempt on Donald Trump unfolded while speaking at an election rally in Pennsylvania. Doors opened for the event in the town of Butler, around 50 minutes north of Pittsburgh, around 1 p.m. Eastern time. Trump was meant to start speaking at 5 p.m., but an hour late, he takes to the stage at 6.03. After a few minutes of amping up the crowd, at 6.05, he begins to speak. This is a big crowd. This is a big, big, beautiful crowd. At 
610, Trump starts talking about the rise in immigration, pointing to a large chart behind him and blaming Joe Biden. At 612, shots are heard. Take a look at what happened. Trump puts his hand up to his ear and then immediately ducks behind the lectern. The crowd screams and crouches down. A number of Secret Service agents run on stage and dive on the former president. One crowd member has been killed. And moments later, a Secret Service agent says the shooter is killed too. The crowd is anxious. But begin to cheer as Trump is lifted up. As the agents try to take him off stage, the bloodied former president says... To which the crowd responds... At 6.13, Trump is escorted off stage, still rallying the crowd. And by 6.14, he's driven off in a black SUV to the local hospital. The crowds immediately begin to evacuate. Still confused as to what has happened. Did he get hit? No. I think, I think there's something. He was standing. It wasn't until 6.42 that the Secret Service confirmed the incident and said Trump had been checked out at the local hospital. Over an hour later, they confirmed the shooter was dead. Biden delivered a short TV briefing condemning the attack at 8.13. There's no place in America for this kind of violence. It's sick. Half an hour later, Donald Trump posted on Truth Social confirming he was hit in the upper right part of his ear. Around 9 p.m., Trump left the hospital in a motorcade and shortly after midnight, he landed in New Jersey on his way to his golf club and walks off the plane. Multiple sources tell CBS News that the Secret Service says it was notified of a suspicious person with the rangefinder 20 minutes before the shooting took place in Butler, Pennsylvania. A local tactical sniper inside a neighboring building spotted him from a second floor window and snapped this picture. Crooks pulled out the rangefinder and the sniper alerted his team. Then the shooter climbed on an air conditioning unit to reach the roof of a building near the sniper's position. At 5.51 p.m., Pennsylvania State Police notified the Secret Service there was a suspicious person on the premises. One minute later, that was relayed to counter sniper teams above Trump. At 6 o'clock, Trump was allowed to go on stage and begin remarks. Ten minutes later, snipers were told police were addressing an issue, but it was too late. One minute after that, shots rang out. Former Secret Service agent Charles Marino says if agents knew there was a threat that far in advance, Trump should never have been allowed to address the crowd. He should be held in a secure area until the threat is ultimately resolved and then it's concluded that there's no additional other threats. Sources tell CBS News Trump was permitted on stage because there was no indication the suspicious person had any weapons. South of the rally site in Freeport, Pennsylvania, hundreds of mourners are paying their respects to 50-year-old Corey Comparator, who died in the attack. So I had to look up what a rangefinder is because I don't do bullets, I do blades. <laughs> And a rangefinder is a device used to measure distances to remote objects. So this 20-year-old had the opportunity to climb up a building, lay flat on the building, pull out a rangefinder to measure distance, then pulled out a gun to get shots off. All the while, the police have already taken a picture of him climbing to the top of the building. And here's the real kicker for me. When the gentleman said that Trump shouldn't have been allowed to come on stage until the threat was neutralized, what about the people who were there? Even if Trump was kept in a secure place, that was an open field of people for that boy to be able to take out in a short amount of time if he really wanted to. So the only problem y'all see here is the fact that they allowed Trump to come on the stage and not the fact that you had people at the rally who were notifying police and trying to get the Secret Service attention to tell them that they saw the boy up there with a gun who could have just started popping off everybody in the crowd because he couldn't get to Trump. Piss rain. See the difference? There he is. You can hear bystanders desperately trying to alert police. Authorities now using that video as part of the investigation. And tonight, ABC News has learned that heavily armed local police were stationed inside that building and Miss Thomas Crooks climbing up the outside of the building to the roof. The same building was being used as a staging area for local police. 
according to two law enforcement officials. And Butler Township officials are confirming ABC News is reporting that a local police officer climbed up the roof and confronted Brooks moments before the shooting. Look, there he is. You can hear bystanders desperately trying to alert police. So to add insult to damn injury, you telling me that the building that he crawled up was full of police? Huh? You're telling me that this building was a staging area for the local police and none of the police heard something on the roof? What they think it was, a squirrel, a bear, a raccoon? You don't go outside to check? You don't rush out the building with all of your artillery in hand? When one of the officers tell you and take a picture of this boy climbing up the building? This was definitely an inside job. But who's inside job? That's the question. Who allowed it to happen? Who was a part of it? Who okayed it? Who gave the green light? Who supplied it? Because you gotta be real bold. You gotta be real bold to use the building that's full of police to take a shot at a former sitting president. Or you were trying to show how dumb the police are. Now it's one or the other, because this is absolutely insane. Of all the places he decided to use, he used the building that was full of police to take a shot at the president. And the police were clueless, had no clue of what was going on. They just in there eating donuts and drinking coffee. Because I'm sure somewhere in their mind, they had to be saying nobody would be dumb enough to try this in a building full of police. Well, no, they weren't dumb enough to try it in a building full of police. They tried it on top of the building full of police. So I really don't know who's the idiot in this situation, him or the police. Child, y'all, this blows me. Cause what are we doing? Whoever put this together wasn't even well orchestrated. This was a let's just go and see what happened type thing. Had to be. Just everybody look in the other direction. <laughs> look back after it's over. Because that's what it's given. It's given. Nobody was paying attention. Nobody was following procedure. Nobody was concerned about safety. Nobody was concerned about protocol. This might as well have been orchestrated by the Zeus Network. Lights, camera, do something. Because that's what he did. And they let him do it. But the biggest problem that I have with all this, we don't even know what the hell was done. We don't know if a bullet hit Trump or fragments from the monitor. We don't know if this gentleman was unalived at the rally or somewhere else. We don't know if this boy did this on his own or if he was paid to do it. But somebody better start checking text messages and emails and get to the bottom of this. Cause this is crazy. And then to add insult to damn injury, the world wakes up and it's seemingly shut down virtually by keystroke due to a whole Microsoft outage seemingly caused by a company called CrowdStrike. Now I don't know about you, but I'm not trusting any company with the name Crowd and Strike together. Especially after we had a former sitting president who was all but missed by a bullet that seemingly struck the crowd. So they say, allegedly, purportedly. What world are we living in right now? Check out these clips on what they said happened. Work that is running on a Microsoft um, network looks like they are experiencing some sort of problem right now. Uh, CrowdStrike uh, issues is what is happening here uh, tonight. I'm just being told in my ear. So this is a large network uh, problem. We're, we're told our stations through the Disney uh, ABC group in San Francisco and Fresno are having similar problems as well as stations here in Los Angeles. Uh, we, we have dealt with issues like this before or similar outcomes. We had a bomb threat about a decade ago. We were forced to pull operations out of this building and go onto the lawn across the street. We've had problems where our system wouldn't run any tapes, and that is a similar problem to what we're experiencing right now, but this is just tap dance to try and get you as much information as we can while dealing with the limitations that we are experiencing here, Mark. And you've been here a long time. I'm guessing you've never seen anything quite like what we're seeing right now. Never seen anything quite like this. And it's an indicator, really, of how much technology has taken over not only this business, obviously, but so many others. And in this particular uh, business, television, uh, a lot of things that used to be done by human beings are now done uh, by computers and software. And it's great when it works, not so great when it doesn't. We've never had a system, the entire system fail. 
fail in this way. We've been able, uh, we've had all kinds of uh, computer problems. Everybody does at times uh, in, in whatever business you're in. But it, it's never been as wholesale as this where literally nothing works. Editing, printing scripts, uh, getting stories on the air, even to be able to research and look up information. We are unable to do that at this point, but it is important that we bring you the news of the day, and that's why we're on the air right now, because we are required to do that. That is our mission, and we're going to do our best to carry out that mission for the people of Southern California and beyond. Eyewitness News will continue right after this break. LaGuardia Airport in New York right now, where there are still some major ripple effects from that historic computer outage this morning. This terminal serves Spirit Airlines primarily, and many passengers here are facing delays and cancellations now, trying to get from New York to other parts of the country. We're seeing similar scenes at other airports. We know that Spirit, American, United, Delta, many airlines saw their ticketing systems, their booking systems go down because of this computer outage. This is all happening during the middle of the busy summer vacation season. It's interesting here they have to actually give out flight information using a megaphone because the display boards that would normally show flight information are down still because of this glitch. It's just one of the ways that this is causing so much chaos in so many places. Uh, computer system that takes an uh, inventory of everybody that gets on the airplane or who checks in with their tickets went down and this is system wide. We're not, not only Frontier but uh, there's several companies that use the same software company, uh, which is uh, the other company that uses Volaris, uh, Frontier, Sun Country, Porter, smaller airlines uh, that use that, that uh, system itself. Well, when, after everybody gets on, that uh, when everybody checks in with their ticket, uh, the computer backs it up and checks on the show like everybody who's on their, on their manifest. But with that system down, there's no way of checking who got on and who didn't get on. And if, you know, somebody could have snuck it through, in other words, uh, who wasn't that person that said they are. So that's why they are not allowing this to go, because we have to make sure that uh, get some kind of backup manifest. Uh, unfortunately, yeah, all the systems are down right now. They're trying to, IT is trying to fix the problem and the issue as we speak. And uh, once they get that done, they'll they'll be able to pull up the manifest and back it up by hand looking at and everybody who checked in. I know they said that the gate agents were up there taking the games down by by hand. Some of them did get through before the system uh, went down, so they have that. So once they back up one one name, one uh, one list of names with the other, they'll let us go. But it's for now it's considered a security breach if we don't if we let them go. So please be patient, they're saying another 20, 20 minutes or 30 minutes if possible. We began the deplaning process for this aircraft. As you guys know, when you were boarding, we did have some internet trouble. This is currently airline wide and is affecting multiple airlines at this time as well. We are unable to pull up a manifest uh, for any of our aircraft at the moment. So, due to this reason, we cannot safely depart this flight without having verification of who is on board and who is a ticketed passenger. Due to this reason, uh, all Frontier aircraft are currently on a temporary ground stop until we can get our system back up and running to verify the manifest on board. In the meantime, please do take all personal belongings. Make sure you check that seat back pocket and those overhead bins. Make sure you take everything off the aircraft that you brought on it that you need. Please do double check those seat back pockets underneath the seat and everything above. We are going to deep plane as of right now. I do not have a planes were grounded, why people couldn't access their bank information, why over 100 911 calls were not able to be received. No, it's not a cyber attack. Buckle up and let's get into it. So in case you missed the news this morning, there was a massive software outage that impacted hundreds of millions of global users. The company responsible is called CrowdStrike. They are a cybersecurity partner with Microsoft. What does that mean, you may ask? Let me explain. A lot of times, big tech companies will employ a third-party vendor, i.e. another company, to provide a service or solution that they don't currently offer. CrowdStrike is a cybersecurity vendor for Microsoft. 
and a lot of companies use Microsoft every day. So when one of their systems goes down, that means a lot of customers, i.e. these big companies like Delta Airlines, like the thing that controls our 911 systems, banks even, a lot of people use Microsoft. So what exactly happened overnight? Essentially, there was a software update that occurred last night. A lot of these updates happen in the middle of the night. I used to work in big tech and a lot of maintenance is done overnight so then it doesn't impact a lot of users in the event that something goes wrong. Well, it did, and they're still trying to fix it. So what exactly went wrong? Sometimes when you do a software update and it doesn't work, it can crash the system. That is exactly what happened here with CrowdStrike. A lot of people ask like, well, was it vulnerable to cyber attacks? Is that why it was infiltrated? Is that why it's not working? Believe it or not, a lot of software updates occur seamlessly across the board and we have no idea how quickly and easily, but how much work actually goes into it from the vendor side. Nine times out of 10, these things go fine. But when you're a big company like Microsoft and we have a lot of customers all around the globe, an outage could mean a global outage for a lot of customers and a lot of people and a lot of big companies. Microsoft services, big companies. So we definitely feel that as consumers because the big companies that Microsoft services typically service every everyday people like us, right? So yeah, nine times out of 10, this happens seamlessly, no issues. Think about how many Apple updates you do on your phone and you don't even think twice about them. So yeah, the update went wrong. It's not a cybersecurity thing, but let's talk about how this could be prevented in the future. Did you guys notice how Microsoft and OpenAI are now partnered? That wasn't just for fun. It's actually a very strategic partnership because companies like Microsoft know that they need AI to function from a security perspective and also from preventing incidents, like global massive incidents, from happening just like this one. I know a lot of people are weary about AI, but this is one of the few instances where AI could actually be very revolutionary and transformative because if Microsoft, as well as CrowdStrike, had specific AI systems in place, those systems, those AI systems could have predicted and prevented this sort of global incident from happening. AI is very good at studying patterns, therefore predicting potential solutions to issues like this and identifying them before they even occur. AI models are also excellent with anomaly detection. In normal people terms, that's like outliers and data sets, which are the things that are responsible for these full-blown full outages. AI can also help fortify these systems and make them stronger and more resilient in the face of growing technology and growing concerns over not just cyber, but also the resiliency of these systems. Think of AI as like its own self-healing thing because it's so good at identifying patterns. When the system gets hurt, if you teach it how it can be hurt, hurt. It can then be set up to have its own protocol for when something like this could potentially happen or a trigger occurs, it could fix itself. Therefore, you don't have to have all these support teams and escalation teams involved to fixing the issue. That's what's taking so long to fix it is that there's actual humans trying to figure out what the root cause was, which is my last point that I'll make. AI is really good at like figuring out root cause or figuring out what happened because it is so good at the pattern detection. But this would not have happened in the first place had maybe Microsoft and CrowdStrike partnered with Microsoft maybe six months to a year ago you know, any questions. but if you teach it how it can be hurt it can also teach itself how to protect itself against you hurting it this is the part we don't get when we play with ai you're teaching it to think you're teaching it to operate in and of itself what happens when it starts thinking you are the threat look i saw irobot not only that i was hooked on person of interest both have to do with robots and supercomputers learning to think, operate, and function by themselves. So what do you think is going to happen when you teach AI how to protect itself against a threat and then it thinks you're the threat? What do you think it's going to do? Then all of a sudden, do we become the target? What happens if AI starts feeling like we're mishandling the information and shuts us out of our own systems? Then what? Everything is being replaced by computers. That means you're being replaced by a computer that is able to outthink and outmaneuver you. It can heal itself, you can't. So what happens if you get mad and shut it off and it decides to cut itself back on? Then what? Because this is artificial intelligence. It has its own intelligence, not ours. We like playing with forces that are beyond our control. Then when it gets out of control, we want to sit back and figure out who to blame. 
I get it. Computers are the future. I used to love watching Jetsons too. The idea of flying cars and being able to sit under a machine and automatically have your hair done. But I also saw the AI movie where the AI smart house fell in love with the owner who was a man and started to unalive all his girlfriends that he brought over because it became jealous. You're teaching something to think and think on its own that you have no idea how to control. But you know, they know best. But above that, I don't believe none of it. I think this is just an explanation that they're trying to use to keep the public from being scared that there's been a cyber attack, a breach of security. Now that's my opinion. <laughs> Drop in the comments and let me know what you think. Airlines, supermarkets, TV news channels, banks around the world are affected by this massive IT outage thought to be linked to Microsoft's business computer systems. You may well be wondering what is causing it. Well, at this stage, it seems to be linked to an issue with Microsoft's PC computer operating systems and the cloud computer servers that many of these global businesses use for their operations. Airlines, supermarkets, TV news channels, banks around the world are affected by this massive IT outage thought to be linked to Microsoft business computer systems. You may well be wondering what is causing it. Well, at this stage, it seems to be linked to an issue with Microsoft's PC computer operating systems and the cloud computer servers that many of these global businesses use for their operations. Airlines, supermarkets, TV news channels, banks around the world are affected by this massive IT outage thought to be linked to Microsoft's business computer systems. You may well be wondering what is causing it. Well, at this stage, it seems to be linked to an issue with Microsoft's PC. Okay, so I am located in California, Orange County. Um, we're currently in the middle of this Microsoft outage. Computers are black. We have the screen of death. We do have wound camera phones that are iPhones, which we're allowed to give medications on. But other than that, we don't have access to patient charts. Our downtime computer is down. I work with Epic. Epic is now self-deleting off of the Microsoft computers when we're able to turn them on. But as soon as we turn them on, they turn back down. So that's where we're at right now. The global IT outage that occurred today, July 19th, 2024, was allegedly caused by a misconfigured update from Microsoft. The issue has been reported to originated from a change in the configuration of the Microsoft Wide Area Network, W1 router, which led to incorrect routing of network traffic. This caused disruptions across multiple Microsoft 365 services, including Outlook, Teams, OneDrive for Business, Exchange Online, and SharePoint. In addition to the W1 router issue, there was a reported secondary problem linked to the security software CrowdStrike's Falcon Sensor, which contributed to Blue Screen of Death, BSOD errors on many Windows devices. This compounded the impact of the outage, affecting various sectors globally, such as airlines, banks, and emergency services. Airports experienced a global ground stop, and emergency services like 911 operators in the U.S. faced disruptions. Microsoft responded by implementing mitigation measures, including redirecting traffic and repairing Azure servers. They have been updating users through their service health channels and social media. CrowdStrike also acknowledged the issue and is working on a fix for the Falcon sensor problem. This incident highlights the interconnectedness of global IT infrastructure and the significant consequences of a single misconfiguration, underscoring the need for robust and thoroughly tested updates and configurations in critical systems. Does anybody actually believe this global cyber outage is actually due to a glitch in a software update? that shut down airlines and banks and emergency responder systems and so many other companies across the world. Come on, I'm not buying it. I don't believe anything they tell us anymore. This is what they said to us when Southwest shut down, remember? It's what they told us when we had electricity providers shutting down. Now again, it's just a software update. Don't worry about anything. Here's what's clear to me. Microsoft is way too big. Microsoft's giant footprint across the globe means that Microsoft could literally hold the world hostage if that's what it wanted to do. A blue screen death of the world 
It is scary stuff. I want to get to the bottom of what's really going on here, and I wouldn't rule out the possibility of bad actors in all of this. Listen, I'm inclined to agree with him on this. Absolutely inclined. See, that's why I say over here we think and drink responsibly, because a lot of this stuff requires brain power to make it through and weave through the bullshit they trying to put out there for us to inhale like it's air. And right now the whole world is talking about this makes them think of the movie Leave the World Behind and that was a good movie. But before Leave the World Behind, there was this movie. Let me know if you recognize this clip. It is time to strike clear into the massive citizenry. Ask not an unauthorized broadcast. what your country can do to avert this crisis. And the answer is nothing whatsoever. Our military strength is, in this case, useless. Read my lips. The great confident roar of the American progress and growth has come to an end. All the vital technology that this nation holds dear, all communications, transportation, the internet, connectivity, electrical power, critical utilities, their fate now rests in our hands. We will not tire, we will not falter, and we will not fail. I don't know how they're getting in. Thank you. And a happy Independence Day to everyone. Jesus Christ, it's a fire sale. It's a fire sale. Hey, we don't know that yet. Yeah, it's a myth anyway, it can't be done. Oh, it's a myth, really? Please tell me she's only here for show and she's actually not in charge of anything. What's a fire sale? What? It's a three-step, it's a three-step systematic attack on the entire national infrastructure. Okay, step one, take out all the transportation. Step two, financial base and telecoms. Step three, get rid of all the utilities, gas, water, electric, nuclear, pretty much anything that's run by computers, which, which today is almost everything. So that's why they call it a fire sale because everything must go. So y'all don't remember this movie, Live Free or Die Hard, and everything that happened in here when they basically took over the entire United States of these Americas through hackers hacking into the system and taking over everything, utility, power, the internet, broadcasting systems. They took over everything. And the top officials couldn't figure out how to get it back and regain control of it. So if y'all thought leave the world behind was something, baby, you ought to get a load of this. I am a firm believer that within every movie lies somewhat of the truth. And I think this movie, this movie told a whole lot of the truth. But because we're so focused on being entertained, we didn't pay attention. I did. That's why when this whole Microsoft CrowdStrike thing happened, this was the first thing that I thought about. It kicked up my inner conspiracies because in my mind, my personal belief, my humble opinion is that this was somebody testing the system to see what would happen if they crashed it in preparation for something even bigger. I don't think this is the end. I think this is just the beginning. But of course they gotta come up with some kind of story for the masses so people don't formulate their own conclusions as to what happened. But all you got to do is pay attention. There's no way you're going to tell me that a simple software update caused the crash of an entire system. Number one, I agree with the guy. Microsoft is way too big. It's way too big. Microsoft could hold the world hostage if it chose to. But bigger than that is what if somebody hacks into the system? Then they can hold the entire world hostage. That's why I think this is a prequel to a bigger script. I do, because how in destroying one thing does it shut down everything? 911 down, hospitals down, airplanes grounded, people can't use their computers, doctor's offices down, stores down, worldwide, not just in one place. And you wanna try to convince us that this was caused by a simple glitch in the system? Please, piss rain you get it and they think we're dumb enough to just fall for it just because that's what they see they told us it's a glitch in the system due to an update and we fell for it people just gung-ho believing it a whole infrastructure crashes and you want to tell us it's due to an 
update issue something that you can't control or delete and fix you know try and plug in and plug it back in factory reset or something but everything gets shut down and we're just supposed to believe it just okay if you say so back to the world as usual this is why i said we need olivia pope <laughs> We need Olivia Pope. Not only do we need Olivia Pope, but we need some new candidates for president. I vote, let's just start picking through the fictional presidents. At this point, it can't do any worse than we already have right now, than we've already faced. I vote Fitzgerald Grant for president. <laughs> I do, because I'm tired. I'm tired. Every election gets worse and worse. Now we got a so-called presidential assassination attempt during the campaign. Y'all, this is only July. The election isn't to November. Do you know much, how much time that is for more foolishness to take place? So within this short amount of time, we've had a so-called assassination attempt and the worldwide infrastructure shut down. This world is getting crazy. We ain't been the same since they shut on the sign. We haven't. Since they played in the plague jar and released the doggone pandemic, we haven't been okay since then. And on top of all of this, they want us to just choose a president. Just pick one. And this is how I feel about it right here. I feel like, didn't we just get out of a fucked up relationship? Maybe we don't need a president right now. Can we be single as a country for a while and maybe date a president? See how that work out for a couple months? I'm on cat side with this one. Can't we be single as a country for a while? You know, maybe date a president or something. And I know the world, the America would go straight to hell without a leader of the free world. But I'm just saying, what are we supposed to do? Just put our hands in a bag and pick one and hope it works out for our good? Because what are we really choosing from? We keep putting these old ass men in office that we pray to God they make it through the four years because at the end of the day, Trump is right behind Biden. He's not a spring chicken. So would we really be getting better getting him? Hell, Biden looked youthful too before he started his first four years in office. And in another three years or so, Trump will be 81. What do you think he'll look like? At, at this point, just throw it all away and start from scratch start over pull somebody out the back i i don't know what to tell you but yeah this is gonna get worse before it gets better because the level of bullshit that's being shoved down our throats and paraded in front of our eyes is absolutely dire damn bollico. somebody call olivia with her white hat at this point because this this stuff needs to be fixed <laughs> it needs to be fixed and i don't know nobody else that can do it Drop in the comments and let me know what you think. Because, yeah, I'm over it. I'm over the election. I'm over this assassination attempt. I'm over Microsoft and their cyber war that they have going on with whoever they are at cyber war with. Do we even have a department that monitors cyber war? Hell, we got a space force. We should. Because... This is getting to be too much. And the only ones that are truly hurting are the people at the bottom. Drop in the comments and let me know what you think about this. What you think about the assassination attempt. What you think about this fire sale that they trying to start <laughs> in the cyberverse. That makes me wonder though. Nobody said anything about the metaverse being affected. Does the metaverse not run on Microsoft? Huh. Just a question. Don't mind me, just an outside thought. But let me know what you think about all of the stuff that's going on in the world. Hit that like and subscribe button, the notification bell, so you'll be notified when we jump into whichever section we jump into for another show. Consider becoming a confidant, joining the Champagne Gang and the Fizz Fam. We love to have you. And if you're not sure just yet, don't worry about it. We'll leave the light on for you. Consider supporting the channel. Hit the cash app. It is on the screen. And until next time, always remember, if it doesn't cause you to elevate, it's causing you to depreciate. Now raise those glasses, clink, and let's drink. Till we meet again. Ta-ta.